Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is the third Sunday of Advent, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, Who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Messiah. So they asked him, What are you then? <clears throat> are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. So they said to him, Who are you, so that we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert. Make straight the way of the Lord. As Isaiah the prophet said, Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, <clears throat> but the one, um, there is one among you who you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today is Gaudete Sunday, and uh, this is the Sunday. It's called Rejoice Sunday. We wear different colored vestments. They are rose-colored, and we basically, in the midst of our examination and time of penance that is a part of Advent, it's not as, as, as heavy and intentional as Lent, but it is still a, a penitential season uh, in that sense. But in the middle, just like we have Laudete Sunday in Lent, we have Gaudete Sunday in Advent. And Gaudete means rejoice. It comes from uh, the word Gaudeo. And uh, to, to tell you about the grammar of this word Gaudete, it is the second person plural present active imperative. In other words, it's, it's a command, but it's a command that is to a, a lot of people. It is the you plural. Or if uh, you lived in the South, like when I lived in Virginia, we would say y'all. So today, what we really would want to say is rejoice y'all. And uh, that would kind of give you the idea of what is going on with this day. And in this day of rejoicing, we again are with John the Baptist. And here we have the, uh, the uh, introductory uh, material from John's Gospel, where John introduces us in a unique way to John the Baptist. So this is the Apostle John talking about John the Baptist, and uh, basically, uh, as he talks about in the beginning, uh, regarding Jesus, he says that this life, talking about Jesus, it was the light of the human race, the light that shines in the darkness. And then later about John, as we read earlier in our, our gospel reading, he says he was not the light. So John the Baptist wasn't the light, but came to testify to the light. So we know John was sent to testify to Jesus. And then a few verses later, we have the introduction to John the Baptist's ministry. And in it, he testifies about himself because the, uh, the Jews sent uh, from Jerusalem some priests and Levites. Now, priests, of course, are the ones who minister in the temple, and the Levites are the ones who assist them and kind of like priests and deacons in a sense. Um, and they sent them, along with some Pharisees, to find out who this guy was. You know, there were a lot of people coming from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Galilee, all over. There were people that were going to John in the wilderness, and there they were going and being baptized. And uh, 
He was baptizing them and calling upon them to repent, which means to turn around and go the other direction. In other words, for uh, to prepare their lives for the coming of the Messiah, because the kingdom of God, as he says, is at hand. So they wanted to ask him who he was. And he obviously said, and truthfully so, I am not the Messiah when they asked him about that. No, I'm not the Messiah. So they asked him, are you Elijah? And they were referring, you may remember over the last couple of days, we've talked about the fact that Jesus said John was Elijah. Because in Malachi, the last prophet of the Old Testament, the last verses were a prophecy about a coming Elijah. Uh, what many have called the Elijah of the, of the latter reign, the latter pouring forth of God's grace. And this Elijah was uh, prophesied as coming before the Messiah. And they wanted to know, are you the Elijah? Now, John didn't claim that for himself. John, uh, Jesus gave that uh, uh, nomenclature to him, but John never claimed it for himself. He never claimed any status. He wasn't a prophet. And, uh, you know, this was something that, again, was very clear. John said, I, you know, I basically came with one message. I'm a voice crying in the wilderness to make straight the way of the Lord, going back to Isaiah's prophecy to, you know, make the valleys high and the mountains low and make the path straight for the coming of the Messiah. So he was basically saying, no, don't look to me. Look to the one who I'm talking about. I'm not worthy even to uh, untie his sandal strap. So John was really, again, focusing completely, exclusively on the importance of the coming of the Messiah, Jesus. And um, this was a, a powerful testimony. Again, John never claiming any notoriety for himself. If they had said, are you Elijah? And he said, yes, I'm Elijah. They would have taken that message back, and then there would have been this brouhaha about John being Elijah or being the prophet. He didn't want that. He just wanted his message to go out. So he kept himself in the back, in the, the, uh, uh, in the background, so that all of the focus could be on Jesus. And again, this is the one who was coming, he said, the one who sandal strap. <clears throat> I am not worthy to untie. That's the difference between him and I. He is the one that you need to focus upon. So this was, again, the ministry of John the Baptist in the wilderness was not to ever call attention to himself, but only call attention to Jesus. And you may remember that later on he, he said, you know, I must decrease and he must increase. John the Baptist was an amazing prophet. He was Elijah of the Old Testament, and he was the prophet of the New Testament, the prophet of the coming of the Messiah. He was all of those things wrapped into one and was the, the uh, reminder uh, to the, the people of the day of the importance of the time in which they lived. John the Baptist is for us, again, a reminder of the day in which we live right now in Advent. Okay, we are, we've got Christmas coming in just a week and a day. We have things going on. But you know what? The most important thing is to recognize the fact that we are preparing our hearts, not only to celebrate his first coming or to think about his second coming at the end of time, but all of those comings in between, that we would be prepared, that he would come and dwell with us uniquely, and spiritually, through the Eucharist, through the scriptures, through the various ways in which he makes himself known to us today. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I think today one of the things that's a big takeaway <clears throat> is to think about the fact that whenever we hear of John the Baptist, not only was he a voice crying in, in the desert at the time of Jesus, he's still crying in the desert today. The desert of our culture, our noisy culture, that is filled with all kinds of sounds except 
uh, the voice of John the Baptist. And he is there still in the desert crying out to a generation today going, behold, make straight the way of the Lord. Straighten out your heart. Make yourself ready. In these final seven days that we have before Christmas, I'd encourage you, if you haven't gone to confession, please take advantage of that. Uh, I would just really encourage you to take some time each day to spend it in prayer, reading scripture, and just thinking about the fact that your heart needs to be prepared, not just for a wonderful Christmas day for your family, as good as that'll be, not just for a wonderful Christmas dinner, not just for the presents under the tree, but to be prepared to celebrate the real reason for the season, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.